So thank you again for being with us in this new podcast. We have Colin Hogan. He is the managing Hello. director of Demo Doc. Uh, video agency company. Uh, he's in Chicago right now. Um, I think um, he has a lot of things that talk to us about this business of uh, marketing and video production. So why don't you introduce yourself, Colin, and tell us what you're doing. Thanks for having me. I'm Colin Hogan, Managing Director of DemoDuck. Um, DemoDuck has been around since 2011, started very much in the animated explainer video space. I've really evolved to anything that a business is looking to accomplish with video in terms of production, we can help them get it done. So whether that's a live action commercial production shot in a studio, uh, it's, uh, you know, the animated explainers is a big component of what we do. Perhaps it's a digital campaign they're looking to roll out. We're full kind of cycle production agency as well. So everything from concept to scripting all the way to the edit, the animation and final sound design and final render. So <clears throat> we've evolved over the last, I guess 12 years plus to become a little bit more of a one-stop shop for anything anyone needs. Our whole thing is about being a very versatile video production agency. Uh, and that's something I think is of important uh, interest to me based off of my background and working with a few different mediums. And I think is uh, a really valuable way to keep our own team engaged and, and be able to work with clients in unique ways as well. So um, I've been in my role for, I think, about six years now as managing director. We're wow. seeing kind of the, the day-to-day wow. operations, and it's been great. What took you to immerse yourself in this world of video animated video, of video animation? So I've been doing video personally for a long time. I did it as a kid, actually, quite a bit. My um, dad I worked for Sony, so we always had some cameras around the house. So I was always filming various like commercial spoofs with my siblings. I had my own uh, public access television show. So locally just shooting some stuff with my friends. And it was like a sketch comedy show in high school, which continued that kind of interest in the world of video production. Uh, and then I moved out to Chicago after school and, and pursued it a little bit still on the side. Uh, but I got lucky when I joined Demo Duck, there was about five people. So they're looking for a marketing manager. So I had a little bit of experience in video, a little bit of experience in copywriting. Um, so I came in to help with sort of the marketing efforts, did some scripting on the side. The scripting involved into a little bit more of like a creative lead type of position where it helping drive the concepts on the front end, but also make sure that the creative was being held from concept all the way to execution. Uh, and then in 2017 is when I transitioned into the, from that creative lead role into this position. And now you know, we're 17 people. So we've grown a decent amount. Uh, since that time as well. So what would be your advice for someone that is trying to start a, a business as a marketing agency in Latin America? There's a few things that come to mind. One is it is very beneficial if whatever your niche is resonates with you personally. I, men- I mentioned earlier that Demoduck's niche is kind of versatility. I've always pride myself on being someone that knows um, at least a little ab- about a lot of things, but that versatility is helpful if you create a good client experience, they're going to continue to come to you for different types of projects, or at least see if you're interested in having the versatility to be able to execute on a lot of different styles is important. So again, that's just kind of my own personal interest. So having Demo Duck evolve to be a very versatile agency was something of importance to me. So for, for people that are starting out, whatever the niches of your agency, whatever your service offerings are, you have to be able to have the ability to find some passion in those, because if not, it's going to be pretty apparent and perceived probably quickly from your clients that you're not kind of fully into it. Um, and then also just being able to say no is important. When you're starting out, you probably want to take on every project you can, but there may be some projects that are less desirable that come through the door and that can set you on a divergent path of what you want to do um, because you end up doing that work and the work you do and put out there begets more of that type of work. So you just have to be careful not to take on too many projects you don't like. And then you are all of a sudden known as that type of specific marketing agency and you've gone down a tough path. Not to say you don't have to say yes sometimes, or maybe you're not hundred percent passionate, but you need to kind of do one for the real and, and one for the meal, as they say. So you know, one, to, one to keep the lights on and one to, yeah. to keep you moving forward. How difficult was it at the beginning to know your mark and a type of industry you want to get into with Demoduck? You know, in our industry in 2011, we were one probably a handful of organizations out there in the explainer video space. The term explainer video hadn't quite blown up yet. <clears throat> and then by like 2014, 15, 
there was just you know copies of demo duck itself like people actually stealing some of our brand elements website copy even our name but then there was just this explosion of explainer video services or agencies so i think that's when it became a little bit different of we're no longer educating people on what the explainer video term is and their need for a video it's about standing out in terms of the sea of competition so figuring out where you kind of put um you know your focus of the external marketing is important there we we put a lot of focus i think at that point around the concepting and scripting phase because we worked back then with a lot of startups and smaller businesses who didn't maybe get pitched like concepts, which I think is a fun thing to get pitched as someone that runs a small business is like, Ooh, this marketing agency is going to like come up with creative concepts for my video or my ad campaign. But I think that's where we put a lot of our focus that's evolved over time with us leaning more into the versatility component, but it, it definitely, we saw the competition or what we would perceive as competition evolve over time from trying to educate people on what video is and we're competing with other kind of, uh, marketing techniques versus everyone feeling like maybe they need to do video. It was more kind of direct competition in the video production world and specifically the explainer video world. You talked about live action. I mean, there's a lot of companies, not a lot, but there are very good companies that work in live action and they do a pretty good job. Some of them even are moving towards Unreal Engine and trying to use that software. Um, but do you work in 2D and 3D as well? Uh, how do you see the market? Yeah, so we do live action, we do 2D and 3D. I, you know, I, the, the world of Unreal Engine and, and some of that technology, I think is going to be an in, interesting, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a challenge, but change in the future. I think it's going to be ultimately, the way I would break it down is like, are you painting or are, are you sculpting? And people that can do both, I think will benefit from a painter's perspective. You have like a blank canvas and then you have some paint and you got to figure out how it all kind of goes together. But a sculpting usually have a little bit of clay and it's about molding it. So some of these technologies like Unreal Engine, I think will be more for the sculptors of the world who just need to get some clay and then they can get their hands around it. And perhaps some of these technologies are providing that clay and then you're going to make it <clears throat> raise the level of creativity, customize it to the specific project at hand, make sure it's engaging. It'll be interesting to see how maybe painters start to become more sculptors. And um, again, I think we pride ourselves on being able to do both. Uh, paint and sculpt. And I think that also gives us that versatility and style where we can do 2D, we can do 3D, we're gaining more knowledge in, in some of these new technologies coming out. And then live action is my background. So that's something that as I moved into my position now, I wanted to make more of a an offering for Demo Duck. But we still see a wide range of, of requests for different types. It's It really comes down to, I think, the brand of the company we're working for, with or the product that we're trying to help them discuss or topic to discuss. And what makes the most sense for that specific project? Because we have clients that we do animation for, we've done live action for, and we shoot testimonials for. Um, so it can be, you know, multiple styles across the same, same, um, same client. Uh, at, where it's going to be in the future, tough. I mean, I, th I think there'll <laughs> be. A, I, I, th I think I think you can make a case against and for both. Um, but I do think there will be more like flashy animation and less of the maybe corporate feeling like corporate Memphis type of characters and you know more like that's kind of more sizzle and less stakes and <clears throat> content will be important but these technologies can spout out content that is maybe pretty close so how can you make it how can you create that feeling which is still uh, at least as of today in the next few weeks uh something that i don't think is replicated with some of these technologies yet that that ability to conjure that feeling maybe the the character stuff will move more into the, the cell animation side of things which i think it's already sort of made that movement and more custom sort of you know frame by frame animation with some of the characters because of um uh, you know i think just the expectation of the audience and also the technologies and the even the explainer video services the animated services where it's like diy animation like some of those are somewhat repli repli replicable to i think um maybe stuff you could create in after effects but uh so maybe less of a focus on animated characters and more of a focus on ways that we move through from one scene to the next so a heightened focus on perhaps transitions but also representation of the products even phys whether it's a physical product or kind of a sales uh software as a service a SaaS platform just the way you represent that product as well it's like just creating excitement around it and i think that's something that 
Apple's always done is like, even if it's just a new iOS, they're like having these big launches and people there are getting excited. So how can you create more of that sense of excitement with the animation versus um, <clears throat> maybe live action will be where a bit more storytelling is done. How can you design an internal service talking about these animation videos that clients will like to buy as competitive with these competitive prices on the market? I think that's a great question. I, I mean, this is for, for me, it's always finding the right balance in terms of client service. And my approach is generally trying to understand if somebody wants to be involved in the process from a client's perspective versus somebody that doesn't because everyone has a little bit different motivation. We have clients that want to come, they want to be as involved as they can throughout the process. And others are coming to us because the last folks they worked with who were somebody they worked with at a different company, they felt like they had to spend a lot of time holding that agency's hand and they don't want that anymore. So once you figure that out, I think you can tailor your process accordingly. <clears throat> But it's definitely being mindful of you don't want either way too many touch points. You want people involved in the right way where they feel like the project's moving forward. And I think same thing, even if they're not heavily involved, you got to give them some some uh, proof of progress throughout the process. Exactly. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is just having momentum carry throughout that project and looping in the, the client in the proper way so that they're like, oh, this is moving forward and I feel good about the way that it's moving forward, whether you're sending them a weekly email or it's a monthly update of how the project is progressing. But momentum, everyone on the project, whether it's a client, the creatives, everybody wants to feel like we're moving forward and we're not just stuck moving in circles. The pricing component, I think, is always difficult. So for businesses starting out, that can definitely be the, the probably largest question of yeah. if, even if even if you're a single, single freelancer, okay, what is my day rate? What's my hourly rate? What do I charge here? I think it depends on You know, the market you're in, both in terms of the the animation types you do, if it's an animation agency, but also like geographically where you're located is an important factor. Uh, and then figuring out what the budgets are of your clients, which yeah, as you have people come through, that can always be a bit of an impasse is they don't want to tell you the budget. You don't want to necessarily undercut what they have as a budget, but ultimately someone's got to say a number. So I, you know, I, I think it's a little bit of internal research that you've got to do to figure out where where you fit within the market. And then uh, I, I don't like keeping things too um, unknown. So it's, at some point, you've got to say the number, even if the client is, of, of what your number is. And if it's helpful, give them, back it out. Let them know how you came to that figure. Is it based off of an hours estimate? Is it based off of a mix of hours and external costs? If you need to bring another freelancer or hire a voiceover artist and stuff like that. So I think that transparency into how the cost is sort of spread out across the project is is helpful no matter what, no matter where you land on the pricing scale, because you may be very high to some people and very low to others. But once you they can sort of see the work or you show your work, they're like, oh, my, I guess all of this makes sense. Do you have a demo doc, a plan to change something in the future? Are you planning to go forward with the, the same stuff you're doing right now? Or do you want to transform to something else? Do you have any plans? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And something that we've been talking about internally every year, we try to do a, an offsite meeting where we talk about where the company's at now and, and have an open round table discussion with the whole team of where do we want to go in the future. I think our big focus right now is continuing to try to lean into the versatility side of things for us, but also we've gotten some really cool projects that are maybe more on the entertainment side, some like title sequence type of projects that are really exciting for us to work on. And I think they create um, a, the opportunity for our team to learn about some new production styles. Typically if it's a, Uh, a, a more of a standard like corporate video production. There's a script and we're creating a storyboard and it's pretty easy to, you know, one-to-one, -one, here's the script line. Here's some visuals that could work for that. But when you just have a title sequence and it's just a music track and like, like a music video, essentially like really, how do you rein it in? How do you accomplish some of the goals of the video? And how do you tell a story when there's nothing there's, it's just, here's, you know, here's the whole episode or here's the whole movie. And we want to create the title sequence that maybe ties into some of these themes. So I think we're going to be looking to continue to bring on a, a versatile, a range of pro projects and have some that are maybe more on that kind of narrative storytelling entertainment side of things, hopefully come in with under the umbrella, but also evolving how we work with clients. As I mentioned earlier, not every client necessarily maybe wants Uh, to be involved every step of the progress. They're looking for someone that they can really trust 
that they can lean on and, and they can have maybe an accelerated path of reaching out to demo duck and getting a, a final video that looks amazing by, you know, uh, the end of the project. So we're trying to figure out different ways and different service offerings that maybe we could package up and communicate to clients so that they know kind of what the expectations are and how it might differ from our typical offering. So a few of those things are in the works right now, but we'll be rolling them out throughout the rest of the year and continuing to kind of see what we can get in terms of different projects as well. Do you think it's something that young people or young startup enterprises here in Latin America, they can begin with as a living or is very unstable? I think there's the ability to get into this world for sure. I think especially as we see some clients who maybe the, the animation need isn't as complex as what we'd be looking to do or the engagement size isn't as big as we want. Um, and I think they still need someone who can create those animations, even if they are a little bit more simple, although they can still be really beautiful animations. It's just the complexity perhaps isn't there. Um, so I think it's not a, a very prevalent skill, though it can be if you're in the industry, feel like everyone does animation. But the average person, I think, and the average business owner doesn't have a, a niece or nephew who does animation that they can turn to. They probably have like, a relative that they can turn to to shoot a testimonial with their iPhone. But in terms of animation, there's at least uh, a little bit there to get started, I think, to be able to get in front of some of these entrepreneurs and small business owners who just need something. They need a logo animation or they need a little bit help plussing up some of their um, animated video language that they're going to be using on their site or uh, on YouTube or even maybe local digital broadcast. So I think there definitely is an opportunity there, even though it feels like a very prevalent skill and obviously technologies emerging. I think people are still going to be looking for a little bit of that customization and, and more of like a direct to freelancer type of relationship. So I think it's there. Have you worked in the episodes of uh, 11 minutes, 20, 15 minutes long uh, for people that are trying to make a ball view video trailer? Uh, Real? Um, we've created video content that long, not necessarily ser multiple series of that length. We've created more of education modules that perhaps have, you know, two to three series that are seven to 10 minutes each because those modules are housed usually like internally um, and it's a more of an engaged viewer. So they're not using them as, as marketing materials. It's more of like you need to go through these. Uh, videos because of regulatory reasons or just to help better understand kind of what the product or service is. Um, but in terms of uh, like, and on the entertainment side, we haven't created like animated television episodes or anything yet. Do you see this new year, 2023, a huge demand on these video productions for companies trying to acquire these type of technologies for their marketing strategies? I think there's definitely going to be an increased demand i think coming off of last year which was a little bit of a trepidatious year for a lot of organizations maybe financially trying to figure out like what's going on are we good are we not and um i, I think that creates a little bit of maybe uncertainty within the market amongst folks but i do think video will be an important component so we may see maybe people that are used to going to like very very large agencies hundred thousand person agencies look for more of like boutique shops to partner with to a stay lean on budget, but also because they're like, I don't know if we need to go through this long process and I don't know if it makes the most sense to go through them. So I think we may just see how that demand <clears throat> shifts in terms of the type of uh, agencies that they work with and the sizes of agencies. But I think it will still be there because it, it does kind of continue to move those companies forward by creating engaging content <clears throat> for their customers or you know, even internal, again, training videos, I think is an important component that we've seen increase in demand over time as we've had more remote workforces. So it'll be there, just be, I think that the demand will be there, just be a matter of like where that demand is coming from or, or with the type of agency, agency that they're engaging with. Uh, how do you share your final thoughts to inspire those people that are listening in Latin America from Demo Doug and Colin Fogan? Yeah, the big two things I think is is find something that is is related to whatever your passion is. So as I mentioned, I grew up creating goofy commercials with my siblings and had a local terribly produced public access TV show. So now in terms of video production for companies, it's it's very much related to what I did growing up. 
So even if it's not directly exactly the, the pie in the sky dream of like working for Disney is what you want to do, but there, I think there are ways to still be able to do what you love in a way that is going to keep you infused. And hopefully that energy is infectious to like any clients or any other creative collaborators that you have. And then also the second part is like persistence. I think it can be tough for folks and especially the creative minded individuals to be able to feel comfortable like marketing themselves or marketing their small agencies but you do have to do it and people are used to it and i think more people will be willing to help you out or spread your name out there so you know build that network don't be afraid to use it so and, and push your services and push the good work that you do and don't be afraid to market yourself so find something you like to do and then find something in the ecosystem of of, of what that passion is and then share your successes share your struggles and share your work.